Hello again. Whenever ideology and politics dictate what scientists and doctors may or may not believe, the stage is set for disaster. At best, under such circumstances, one can expect bad science, and at worst, wholesale loss of life. One remembers what happened in Nazi Germany when science was at the mercy of various crackpot theories. Relativity was rejected because it had been dreamed up by a Jew, and instead various mad ideas derived from Teutonic mythology were embraced. This made even weather forecasting unreliable for the Nazis. In Soviet Russia, the concept of genetics was rejected in favour of Lysenkoism, which was officially officially endorsed uh, because it was in accordance with Marxist theory and it led indirectly to famines. Politics and science don't generally mix. Something very similar is happening today in Europe and the United States with a doctrine called equalitarianism which holds that there are no essential differences between ethnic groups and that the only way in which black people and white differ lies in external characteristics such as skin colour, cross-section of hair and eye colour. Race is claimed to be a social construct, in other words, not a real and measurable thing at all, but something more akin to an optical illusion. There is, of course, not a shred of evidence for any of this, but it fits in neatly with anti-racism, which is, of course, enjoying something of a boom in recent years. So it was that we were solemnly assured at one time that there is no difference between the blood of black people and white, and that the two are freely interchangeable and need not even be stored separately. Of course, this is all very well as a fairy tale to please those of us who dislike racial prejudice. But in the real world, there are many people in both Britain and America who suffer from sickle cell anemia and are in urgent need of blood transfusions. They are nearly all black people, and they need black not just from a central supply stored according to blood types, but rather that blood which comes specifically from other black people. I give a link in the description to this video to a plea for black blood donors and a quick internet search will show the extent of the problem. That story about black blood and white blood being indistinguishable was simply a comforting falsehood which was told for ideological reasons. There wasn't a word of truth in it. What about the fact that African Americans tend to suffer more than white people from high blood pressure? and heart problems. Well, of course, that can be caused by stress, the stress of living as a black person in a racist white society. No wonder their blood pressure goes through the roof. Do away with racism and economic inequality, though, and black people suffer from cardiovascular disorders no more than anybody else. It's our fault as white people for creating a prejudice an unequal society. Well, reducing inequality is a noble aim, as is the abolition of racial prejudice, but this would not cure the nitric oxide deficiency to which black people living in Europe and America are prone. It is this which is crucial in the understanding of hypertension in black people and why it's more common than in white people. I give a link to a paper on this from 2020 in the description to this video. Then there are things like testosterone levels being higher in black men, puberty being earlier, gross motor skills being acquired on average at a younger age, the polygenic risk score for schizophrenia being much greater in those of African origin, and dozens of other things as well. It is not possible to say what if any difference such things make to the life outcomes of black people. Perhaps they are merely medical curiosities with no practical effects at all in real life. We are not likely to find out because there is a desperate desire not to find out. 
In other words, anybody applying for a research grant to look into real and measurable effects of these physiological variations between populations will be very unlikely to get it. That is why much of the research in the field is outdated, and one must look back 20 years to find papers and journal articles about the matter. Even 20 years ago, it was possible to discuss this kind of thing rationally, but in today's febrile atmosphere, where race and ethnicity are concerned, it is felt better simply to avoid looking too hard at the subject. It is only very occasionally that we are able to catch a glimpse of the truth as when there are appeals for black blood donors and so on. In general, though, nobody wants to be the one who challenges or even questions the equalitarian dogma, which states firmly that race simply does not exist. <laughs>